guys, good morning. Welcome back to Everyday Struggle in the Desk. here with DJ Academics and Wayno. I'm what's back. Good? I'm Johnson, back. What's Yo, going on? Pandemics. What the you fresh? Pandemics. I've never seen you what's look good? this black I, in my life. Listen to the desk. I just want to know, because everybody been hitting me on Twitter. How? Why did we have to come find you in some mountains and like... It, it, All like of my vacation Antarctica. comments, you guys took the worst week off. Get back to New York. Oh, yeah. that? Here, we are. Here we are. Here we are. Anytime too. we go missing for a couple of days, it's everything like happens. everything happens. But tell me the week before that wasn't so slow. We did full episodes of fan questions. It was the slowest week ever. All right, but man. Well, we're, we're back. back here. We <laughs> might back. do a, We got to do our episode today. Absolutely. I'm with it. What you do? Whoa. I, I saw my man Wayno at Made in America, bro. Oh, yeah, he's out there in his reporter shit. Yeah, I, saw I was you? doing correspondence. Thank you, Complex. Correspondence, yeah, I had fun. he says. Excuse me. I was doing correspondence. I, I I did Made in America, and then I went to LA for a few days. Wayno was vacation. capping. He just got paid to kick it with his friends. All those niggas uh, have friends. You know all of them. Oh, you I got do the know Pusha T interview. He wouldn't come to Everyday Struggle, but yeah, you I got did. it at Made in America. I got right? a Pusha T interview? I got a Pusha T interview. I got to speak to Juice World. Well, I didn't, I didn't interview Meek, but I got a, my, my first chance to see Meek since he's been home. Everybody that probably don't like me, probably talks <laughs> <away>. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but it was so fun, good. though. It was fun. It was new for me, but it was fun overall. You know? All right. Glad you guys enjoyed your week off. We're back. We're not going anywhere until Christmas, so let's get into the show. So now she says. <laughs> I promise, no more vacations, I'm done for the year. Right. Um, now, unfortunately, we're starting with some sad news. So, Mac Miller did die on Friday. He was only 26 years old, extremely young. His family issued a statement to Rolling Stone saying he was a bright light in this world for his family, friends, and fans. Thank you for your prayers and please respect our privacy. Now, I don't know if you guys ever had a chance to meet Mac Miller. He was an amazing guy, just very down to earth. I remember he did Rap Fix Live with us back in 2013. Actually, Prodigy was on the same episode uh, with Sway and Static Selecta. And He's just so chill. He did most of the episode barefoot. He was always joking and having a good time. So I'm um, sad that we lost him so young. Yeah. <clears throat> Jeez, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the news of his passing hit me like... And this is the thing, because I never met him. Mm. But in music and hip-hop, I see this as like a fraternity, like a brotherhood. Mm. Whether I know you or not, like we're all in the same space. And despite if you have that personal relationship with someone, like... When you hear something happens to someone, and of course, life always comes first before your career or anything else, it hits you, right? And to hear that he passed away was so sudden, um, I was shocked. The person that was telling me, they were looking for confirmation from me, and I'm like, tell me your line. Right. And, and it was one of those things that it, it took me a couple hours to even really digest the fact that he, he was gone. Yeah. Um, I never met him, as I said, but just watching him through interviews, through Instagram and all these other platforms, he seems like he seems like such a, a, a bright personality. Like he seems like the guy who would probably be in a room and be mm -hmm. the fun guy. You get right, me? Right, right, it seemed right. like he was having such a blast at life. Mm -hmm. But you know, I mean, I've watched a lot of his interviews too, and and I also seen him be very and brutally honest about everything he was going through. And I'm so sad that actually happened, but um. You know what? Like, we hope there's a there's a, a goal to everything in life, especially with um, him losing his life, his struggle with uh, addiction, and I don't know exactly what went into it, but I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm a, I lost a horse. I did. Uh, you know, I, I got a chance to meet him one time. Mm -hmm. um, I got a chance to meet him one time. Very cool young man. You know, um, 26 years old. Tragic. You yeah. know, very tragic. Um, I am. I did hear that it wasn't that people have to wait for the toxicology report because yeah. people just ran with a whole yeah, story. Yeah, and as always, I don't There's even think we should. Yeah, right. we shouldn't. We shouldn't focus on that. Like, focus let's just celebrate that. the person. Th that's what I was about to say. Yeah. What I like to do is throw up a peace sign for yeah. Mac Miller mm -hmm. because he did look like he lit up everybody he was around. So you know, condolences to his family. Right. Um, I did check his last album, which was a very good piece of work. Swimming. And um, yeah, I just want to um. Condolences go out. Yeah, no. So of course, a lot of rappers paid their respects on social media, and you notice the theme in all of it. It's he gave me some advice. Everyone was recounting a specific moment, like a way he touched them. You know, it wasn't just an R.I.P. So I wanted to reach out to some people who knew him personally as well. So I asked Karen Civil and also It's the Real uh, to share some memories uh, of him. So let's start with Karen. She sent us a quote and a video of him visiting her in the hospital. So in the quote, she says, "Mac was somebody who was a brother, and we saw each other's family in some of my darkest hours. He was." Was my ray of sunshine. He was a son, a brother, and a best friend. I'm blessed to have had known him, and I send all of my love to Karen, Mark, Miller, and Quentin. And let's check out the video footage. Oh, damn. I'm hot. 
Can I go, can I go twice no. in a row? Can I go twice nope. in a row? Nope, nope. You gotta go. You gotta go. And then I say my famous line. You gotta go. So you have little strategies. And you have no block. Thank you so much for playing. <laughs> So uh, Eric and Jeff of It's The Real also did a nice little compilation video. They've known him for a very long time. So you just see Mac, you just get to see his personality in this and it's pretty amazing. Take a look. Yo, what up? It's Eric, AKA Got The Club Locked Down, AKA Anti-Theft. Yo, what up? It's Jeff, AKA Clumsy Paul Bear, AKA Dropping Bodies. Yo, what's up? It's Mac Miller, AKA number one ha album having ass motherfucker. It's Mac Miller, AKA it's Mac Miller, aka Gucci bracelet and a diamond roly on. Yo, what's up? It's Mac Miller, aka I f both their girlfriends. I just wanted a nickname. You that is what we call you. <laughs> that is. <laughs> aka Bar for twice because I got money like that. I'm Larry Lovestein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Sure. Okay. Think before you touch the mink. <laughs> and a one. And a two. This is the second take, and they said those things last time. I thought they were more creative than that, but I am Mac Miller. <laughs> AKA two mics, one Mac, two girls, one Mac, three bitches, one Mac. Hey, look, and that's a rap. Bow, 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 black, 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 black. Perfect interview. No, no, come on, I have more, more. So rest in peace to Mac Miller, and again, condolences to his friends, family, and fans. So Nightfall Records announced plans to make Blue Slide Park the site of a vigil for him soon. Um, so stay tuned to that. I think we should continue with some good news, right? Right. Speaking of appreciating each other while we're still around, uh, Drake and Meek Mill finally put their beef to an end. Uh, so Drake actually brought Meek out on stage in Boston doing his Aubrey and the Three Amigos tour to perform Dreams and Nightmares. They even shared a hug on stage. Let's take a look. And I'm very honored that you were here to witness it. And I thank you to Meek Mill and all his Dream Chasers family for coming to Boston. And None of this was fake, right? They clearly are enjoying this. So Meek said, we're both happy as shit. Drake said, this really gave me peace of mind tonight. Healing and moving forward created one of the most electric and gratifying moments of my career. Meek, I'm happy that you're home and we could get back to our joint purpose. There's also video footage of them playing ping pong. How do you guys feel about them finally making up? I am very excited about them making up because, you know what, it felt like there was a lot of resentment on both sides and a lot of bitterness because of how things played out. I think for Drake, based on how he felt he was thrusted and kind of quote unquote exposed, he felt really strongly like, you know what, not only I thought that guy was a friend, but I could never forgive or I could never even get to a mutual understanding with that person ever. I remember he, he said in an interview, on Beats One Radio, he said, he said, I don't know how Jay and Nas forgave each other, but I don't think I could forgive that guy. Yeah. Only to literally about a year and a year or so after, forgive Meek. And I, I think forgiveness is key. I think he probably realized that, man, they don't have the same energy for each other. Both of them are in so different parts of their career. Right. It's not like they're going head to head. Meek has been going through so many legal battles to the point that you could tell Drake was like, yo, I got to support him because at the end of the day, that's another black man going through it. Right. Right. And of course, Meek even, he might have felt a certain way at a time, but like, he's been one of the people who like, oh, word, it's a hot new Drake song. I'm not a dude who's going to be like, don't play it around me. He's dancing to it. He's having fun to it. They were both open to it. And I'm glad you could tell watching that reunion. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's not the first time they talked. Right. And I, I wouldn't be, be surprised if that was the first time they saw each other. Mm -hmm. But you could tell it was still a genuine moment. And that genuine moment showed that they are both happy to be cool again or at least just kill that tension where it's like, yo, oh, he going to be there. I ain't going to be there. Or if he going to be there, I got to move like this. The thing that uh, I said this before, the thing that rap fans or just fans in general don't get about rap beef, when two people don't like each other, shit be different. Yeah. And two big artists like that, okay, so the award show time, he gonna be there? Like, we saw they were at some award show, like, shit's tense. Yeah. When you could kind of dead it, and also as someone that you kind of came up with many years, it's, it, it's, it's gratifying, and, and it's, of course, it, it eases everyone around you that you can be like, yo, listen, let's just kill all this. I, I was very happy. Yeah. Heartfelt from act. <laughs> very, very heartfelt from act. Um, 
For me, I've known Meek since he was 16 years old, so like it's good to see his growth. I mean, Jay and Nas had a little bit more history. This beef wasn't really about much. It was about him, Drake writing the records, me getting the verse, discrepancies between there, but it was three years. It was three years it took them to make this happen. It was for Jay and Nas four years, right, to, to make it happen. People could get past shit. It was a dope moment, I ain't gonna lie. It was, it was a very, very dope moment. It was, it was good to see Meek on such a high platform because we all know that Drake got like probably the biggest tour there is right now, right. you know? I wish they had did it in Philly though. <laughs> you know what I mean, that's the only thing. I wish they, I wish it could have been done in Philly, um, so it'd have been a little bit more impactful. Right. But overall, I don't got nothing bad to say about that. I just want people to know that if I don't fuck with you, mm -hmm. I'm not getting cool well, you with know, you because it is. Come on. Nah, but but time overall, heals all. time heals absolutely, all. Absolutely, but <laughs> most. Oh, nah, real <laughs> shit. But overall, <laughs> overall, it was a dope moment. Hey, hey, I, I will say this because. A lot of people don't realize that beef at that point, July 2015, I remember, I remember yeah, yeah. the month and the year. Yeah. When that happened, hip hop kind of split. Drake stopped fucking with a lot of people because he was on some, okay, I see how y'all moving, y'all helped out, whatever. Mm -hmm. Meek stopped fucking with a lot of people like, oh, word? So you're taking sides. Right. I hope all could be forgiven, not only among both, right? Yeah. But even among other people who they picked quote unquote size like there's rappers who were rocking with Drake because hey shit Drake might be the meal ticket or Drake's my friend you get me and the same with Meek hopefully this will dead a lot of tension we missed out on so many great records we missed out on so many great moments because we literally saw a separation of two guys who came up and who were in my opinion opposite sides of a coin you have a dude who's street you have a dude who's kind of pop but he represents a different element they combine a lot of times with great moments, and we were robbed of that. Hopefully, we can see more, and who knows? We might get a record. That's why I say all the time that Meek is one of the top five, or either one of the top rappers of today, because I feel like for the special place that Drake holds with what he does and how he runs shit, Meek runs that on the other side. You know, like I feel like, of course, like Drake has like the more mainstream success, but Meek. If Meek didn't have a lot of legal troubles over his head, it would be so much more that he could do. He could travel more, he could tour more, he could make things bigger for every yeah. project that he drops. So salute to both of the yep. men for coming together and making a moment for hip hop. We'll never forget this. We're them. stronger together. Beautiful. Absolutely. And by the way, I, I want to just say, like, for both of them, I, I hope people realize, like, because, you know, we, we have a lot of fuse in hip hop from time to time. Like, these men settled their differences and they came together on stage. Um, unless somebody died or something on, on either side of whatever feud y'all have, like, there could always be a time that y'all get cool. Exactly. You get me? And it's always important that nothing happens to that point. Mm -hmm. Because if something happens, you know what I mean? If something happens that was that extreme, yeah. I don't but know. But that's why it. the yeah, timing yeah, is amazing, extreme, right? Because yeah. we're, we're losing so many artists this year, unfortunately. It's yeah. nice that they solve these issues knowing that. At the same time, I mean, and that, like, I'm just having my own little stance. Bueno. Bueno. No, this and this don't got Harlem nothing to do. Bueno. This don't got nothing to do with no drinking. No, 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 of course, shit. of course. It's just cer certain things can be repaired too. We always keep that in mind. Like you know, time does heal a lot, mm -hmm. but uh, disrespect. You know what I mean? And this this is totally unrelated to to Drake and Meek mm -hmm. because I feel like their their whole thing was it started off based on hearsay and you know. Meek stance on his records and Drake and all types of other little shit. I think shit. there's so many miscommunications. It's a lot of and miscommunications. There's a lot of things. But there's, a, there's a lot of situations and not only hip hop but life that are stemmed from disrespect. Yeah. And as a man, I can get like, if we can come together and have a conversation about disrespect and you're man enough to apologize, cool. But if you're not, then we ain't never got to be cool. With you. No? And, and I will say, not every like issue has to turn into oh we're hugging on stage right 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 but I, I do hope all and i mean all issues in hip-hop you get to a place where it says yo listen we ain't gonna be friends but we ain't gotta be at each other's next yo it's hard could you imagine how hard it is to be like all right if i'm here you gotta make sure he not here it's too yeah, many that's, people that's it's why. too many moving that's parts why. oh okay we're at award show make sure he leave before i come in that's weird you get me not everybody gotta be friends but it got to come to a place that if y'all operate in the same industry, Drake said on the record, if somebody ain't going to die, we got to debt it. You feel me? Like, where yeah. are y'all going to have that tension forever? Or are you going to be like, you know what? I'm past it. Mm -hmm. 
I still don't fuck with you because you a snake or whatever, or you did whatever. Yeah. Well, but we could not be at each other's necks. Hold this thought because that's gonna come up later in the episode. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, we're gonna, we gonna get to it. Oh, love shit let's later. see how much time can really heal. Right. Uh, but yo, in the meantime, Eminem came out of nowhere with a surprise album, oh, his tenth project called Kamikaze. Boy, academics was excited about this. Uh, so he's projected to sell over. Don't look at me like that. Projected to sell over four hundred thousand copies. Executive produced by Dre. M, just let me finish this. I got you. Uh, so M, he had a lot to say. He did not like how people reacted to his last project revival. Uh, took shots at Lil Pump, Yachty, Lil Zan, Charlemagne, Joe Budden, my guy here, Academics, Tyler, the Creator, Oh Sweatshirt, Vince Staples, Ja Rule. So many people I can't even really name. Um, should we play a snippet of the fall, Academics? Go ahead. Let's do Roll it. the clip, please. Don't make me have to give it back to academics. Say this shit is trash again. I'll have you twisted like you had it when you thought you had me slipping at the telly. Even when I'm getting brain, you'll never catch me with a thought. Lacking with it. Um, so academics, your reaction to this diss. I haven't seen you this excited since uh, Drake dropped Scorpion. This you were going crazy this, on this Twitch that night. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, relax. Relax, people, relax. It's sick. Uh, I listened to this entire album. I, of course, listened to that song a million times in the fall. Uh... It was a lot of, it was Eminem doing what he does best, which I think in this age we call it cloud chasing, but it's a lot of name dropping. Uh, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Eminem's been doing that his entire, entire career. career. That's what I'm saying. Career. You can't. That's what I'm saying. Career. Okay. In this age, when you name drop and you like mention people, it's called cloud chasing, but like he does, he's been doing that, he's right? He's been an expert at it. What it tells me is that Eminem was listening. And it felt like his last album, I stand firmly by it. If you listen to that album, you hear a bunch of contrived bullshit. And contrived bullshit, not that, I've never sit here, I've never sat here actually, or sat on the last set we had, and critiqued his rapping ability. But a lot of the sincerity in the records that was put out, it was like, bro, this is kinda, like you guys are having a formula and just doing what you think will work. It doesn't feel genuine. And this record was not that. This record was not, oh, hey, let me build up a stance that I believe people will rock with. This was, hey, listen, some of y'all really think that I ain't that guy no more. Let me get at y'all directly. Mm. He name dropped everybody who gave him a critique. Mm. I was the man to be name dropped. Actually, that was an honor. I thank you, Eminem. Mm. But I understand him giving this album, but it does not detract from anything I said about the last album. Contrived bullshit. If he was this in tune with what people felt mm -hmm. and thought when he did, uh, what's, what's the joint called? Revival. Revival? Mm -hmm. It would have been a way better album. This album was actually really good. Hmm. Okay. When do you agree? Yo, I ain't gonna Content lie. Wise? Yo, I ain't gonna lie. It's a really good, I haven't liked Eminem music for a long time. And, and this is and the one. This was, it was, this was good. First, I would like to say that you are a legend, young man, <laughs> for Eminem mentioning your name. That was ill. Now yeah. I'm gonna keep it 100. That's ill yeah. because that just goes to show that the type of content that you put out affects not only the lows and the youngs, but the the Eminems of the world, right? So that's ill. But Eminem, it was really good. Like I I, I can't lie, I was listening to shit like, yo, I haven't heard him sound this good. Which in is a dope. Long so the time. content was good, and he got a reaction. So many people responded to him. You know, right. Ja Rule, Vince Staples, everyone had something to say. So, but it, I had, still, it had impact as well. But I still feel like, even with all of that being said, I, I really like not to like how him and um, Royce use like the young flows of today mm -hmm. and flip that shit. But to me, the best verse on this whole shit was Joyner Luke, Join Lucas on Lucky You. It was definitely Jordan Lucas was wilding on that shit. And also to speak to a, a topic, did we do it here or on our last set? I, I, don't, I don't know, but it was the one where he did the fake video with a girl catching yeah, yeah, yeah. on VHS tape, uh, right? That was yeah. last year. And I remember saying with that, I was like, wow, like this nigga seems pretty much out of touch. I even put on my Instagram. I think Moti was responding to what I even said on Instagram, like, he got caught lacking, and he <laughs> mentioned, and he flipped it. He was like, I'll never get caught lacking. Lacking is such a funny word. Uh, but, but, M, I'm not going to lie. Whatever or whoever was in charge of your rollout back then, yeah, them niggas was out of touch, bro. And I still, I, I'm, I'm going to stand firmly on that no matter when. Mm. I like this project, but this project was literally a reaction. It's a reaction. It's a reaction to everyone. And with a nigga that could rap, that could pretty much almost say, I see you, 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 you. He could do this all day. Mm -hmm. Not giving this chip on his shoulder where he has to kind of respond to critics, right? Because he's done that his whole career or he poke fun at people. 
I wonder how he delivers a project because revival was that he tried to mm -hmm. didn't come across well. Well, you need the hunger, right? So after you put out so many great projects, you need some something to rap about. So, so if that's the motivation, then is well, that something to complain about? He's not really rapping about anything. Let's keep it. No, let, let's keep it called space space. He's not really rapping about anything. He's just rapping, which is his raps are very good. Uh -huh. Like he's he can rap very well. I mean, he's one of the best rappers, you know, lyrically hey. flows all that. But he's not really talking about anything. Wait, well, you no. Know, listen. I'm, I, I love critiquing people. I love tearing them down. But when they do some good, I like building them up. Listen, Eminem dropped bars at everybody who has something to say. If it's, I'm talking to rappers here. If them rappers ain't respond rapping, I don't really want to hear nothing. Oh, so they MGK, say. he did respond. Hmm. I like MGK what he did. MGK did respond. Hmm. You wanna, actually, let's play a snippet of this. Let's talk about it. Man, if I handle your shit, uh, mad about something I said in 2012, took you six years and a surprise album just to come with a diss. Uh, homie, we get it. We know that you're the greatest rapper alive. Fucking dweeb, all you do is read the dictionary and stay inside. Fuck rap god, I'm the rap devil. Come a bare face with a black Were you impressed with his response? He was the only one. Everyone else responded he, Twitter, yeah. Instagram for the most lit. part. His shit was lit. I fuck with MGK because at the end of the day, what does he have to lose? Nothing I at all. I loved it. Rap devil joint, it is fire. He actually, he was talking about some shit. I, you know what? And I know we all love Eminem, but I tweeted this out. M. You got to respond in a week, bro. I'm sorry. And it's probably been a week already. You have, have to respond. To, oh, wait. Hold on, hold on. No, you, no. Can't, same, you can't go away. Same rules. No, no, no. The same rules apply. Wow. Said because everybody hits you with the yo, M diss you. If you went to cook up your secret album, dropped it on some, hey, yo, this is a surprise. I'm getting back at y'all. You're the biggest rapper in the world. That's when true. people his... respond, you got to respond. I'm not saying you got to drop a dedicated song. But you have to respond to the people who are responding to what you're saying. Are you sure? But that, Historically that's not the speaking, first time. when he would call people out in records, it's not like he felt like he has to go back and forth with them forever. Niggas is rapping. He's that's, calling that's pop that's stars that's out. That's not his first time. That's not MGK first time dissing Eminem. That's one. It's not his first time dissing okay. Eminem. Okay. First time Eminem, Eminem responded. It, it took him <laughs> six years, like six or seven years to respond. Eminem, there's no time. There's no time. On responses, yo. Just when you respond, we gave make Pusha sure four we days, we gave Drake four days. What's oh, that's up, different, man? though. That These aren't totally the same situation, dynamic. right? Totally different dynamic. It's different calling a bunch of people you out on your album when you're M versus like. Bro, <laughs> you're right, right. You didn't respond in 24 hours, so I don't hear that <laughs> yeah, shit. You ain't a rapper. So, so yeah, no, you part actually, of the culture. Actually, right? No, no, I responded in the video. I, I responded. Listen. Oh, well, Lil AK dropped the ball here, by the way. No, this was your moment. Oh, right. This was your time to shine. Little act dropped the fucking ball. Trust me, he's responding. But play, kind of plays. This is the only thing I don't get. What? We're so hypocritical when it comes to M. Mm -hmm. M gets to rap about it. You just said it. A bunch of bullshit. Mm -hmm. He could rhyme words well. Give him a thesaurus. He's nice. But when he calls people out, and by the way, let's not act like he's, he's about to sell like 430,000 first week. It's pretty good. Way more than Revival that was promoted a lot with some bullshit campaigns. Mm -hmm. He's about to sell that because he called out so many people. Let's keep it 100. Is it, is it because it's that great rap story? He's he's talking shit and calling people out wait, directly wait, by wait, name. Wait, 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 wait. wait no? You can't, wait, wait, let's not take wait, one no. step, wait, wait, let's not take one, two steps forward on how we feel about Eminem's new fucking because album. Because you said the actual album sidestep. was good besides no, no, it's good. just the it's shots, good. It's, right? It's, it's, no, it's but really I've good. never said sales equal quality. Sales equal demand and what but we people talking about Eminem sales, but not that much. Bro, but what did Revival sell? Revival didn't sell that well? But we talk, but, all right, but we're talking about Eminem here, so don't say that, like, you, you attributing his sales to him dissing The increase people? in sales in him dissing a bunch of niggas. Really? Uh, come on. Yes! Oh, how much? How much of his come sales? On, Yo, he ain't even a single this time. He had one with Beyonce. Here. Are you kidding me? He had a song with Beyonce. Right. For his last, the last revival, right? He had a song with Beyonce. The, the like album the wasn't good. It just wasn't good overall. But you know people would buy it just off the features. This time it's a surprise album. You think everybody's really checking it? For it like that, it was a lot more conversation because mm -hmm. it because matters. it's good. The, now, now, the, okay, no, no. The, this is part, good. The, this and, part is and, one thing. And, there's an and. Okay, it's good. And he's mentioning everybody relevant in the culture. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it hundred. He acknowledged that. Yo, check it. I'm not just M on some type of island. I'm M who's still in his culture, and it matters what academics fucking says. It matters what <laughs> Joe Bun is saying. Ali it matters the fucking no, backboard to his show. No, no, no. And everybody. Charlamagne, <laughs> it matters what this rapper is saying. Ja Rule, you could get it too, still. He was tapping everybody up. A dope effort. I like rappers when they come like that aggressive and that abrasive. But 
You cannot just drop it and run back in your cocoon and wait till six more years to drop your next project. If a rapper responds, okay, so give him his fair So hold on, what's the best yeah. case now? M engages in a uh, back and forth with who? <laughs> Okay. MGK? With, you're right. I'm not, I'm not, white on white how, violence how, is lit. That's how, what I want to say. White on white violence is lit. How would and MGK going back and I'm, forth <laughs> No, no y'all are laughing, but let's not act like fall is cool, but rap devil bodied that. I'm sorry. Okay. So, I, again, I'm not saying... So you would respect... No, I completely understand your point. I'm not disagreeing with you completely. I'm just saying, I'm not if I'm really engaged, Yo, would you be like honest? to see him uh, go back MGK, and forth? MGK, you might be watching this. You upped my respect level for you. My okay. respect level was never this high for you. And again, mm. maybe it's because of my own fault because I haven't listened to your music as I should have. Mm. But when I heard this, I said, whoa, MGK is with the shits. And not only with the shits, but he got bars and he's saying some shit. Mm. And he's addressing a lot of things that now I got questions. I'm not saying <laughs> Eminem got to respond in, in five days. Because obviously, even when we're talking about Drake and, and Pusha, Pusha just put out an album. Mm -hmm. He was in rapping mode, of course. And by the way, it's a big difference. M look like he's half retired, right? And of course, Drake was about to put out an album. We get those time constraints. But M can't just dr drop names and just act like nothing didn't happen. A rapper is engaging you. Don't we have some type of rapper engagement protocol? <laughs> you dissed a nigga. A nigga responded. He got questions. The culture needs to be answered. What's up? No answer? I'm not saying no. I'm just saying I'm not disagreeing with you in that aspect. All I'm saying is that he doesn't have to respond tonight by three, today by three. All right, not by That's tonight. No, but they, 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 people started tweeting that Eminem is working on a, a record to come at people. So I mean, I, well, Billboard reported that too. That yeah. uh, a producer said that something's to come. Yeah, it's, if, it all makes sense later. If if, if M dropped a, a diss song to MGK, MGK price don't went up, bro. Hell yeah! I mean, did, listen, did he, he could just dissolve your market. I'm gonna keep it honey. As long as you go back and forth, you have nothing to lose in today's age. Before uh, Eminem could like totally destroy somebody's career. Right. MGK. People forget that MGK has been here this long. When you look up, he's damn near almost Ooh. 10 years But like Axe says, a move like this, then you level up. People yeah, have more absolutely. respect for All you. All he got to so. do is drop another record and he's, he's lit. And, oh, and yeah. put it like this, yo. This song was number one on iTunes, a fucking response song. Yeah. And it was because not only, like, people were impressed. People were impressed. And all, I'm, all I and have hype. to say to everybody else. And hype. Okay, and hype. Yeah. <clears throat> to all the other rappers who were mentioned, I did learn one thing. I'm not expecting the littles to respond. Of course not. You get me? Everybody, just like myself, Lil AK, was like, yo, we feel privileged to be mentioned. No, it'd be amazing because if all the littles got together on one track. One no. track. One track. Yeah, M. Um, no. Yes. No, come on. And you do the ad libs. <laughs> you can really make that happen. If somebody can make it happen, he can make that shit happen. Nah, come nah, on, nah, academics for the you culture. Can make that shit M happen. came with it. I'm not going to take none of them M. I like all the littles say, you know what? And, and this showed me how much respect people do have for M. Yeah. And I think he probably acknowledges Yeah, can we go scroll to Yachty's tweet really quick so I can read it? He had a good response. He was Little laughing. Pump. He was like, I think it's fire that M took a shot at me. Zan. Yeah. All, most of these Bye. younger guys that were like, yo, That's whoa, respect. I got this. Yeah. Don't get mad at him. I'm privileged. Yep. And that is all good and well. But when an MC steps up. When an MC steps up, we got questions. You really want to see an MGK and Eminem beef? This is pretty funny. Not, not, no, not, I know, no, not you, I know what you mean. Not beef, he but I want a response. <laughs> I will say, though, and I love my brother Joe. But Joe, that nigga came at you lyrically, bro. I don't want to hear a two-hour podcast or a three-hour podcast. Well, guess what? The, the podcast was very lit. And if we have to go with anybody, I'm going with Joe. No, no, no. Okay, okay. No, no. I'm going with Joe. But we're not, I, I don't want to play hypotheticals when I'm told my MC's well, cable he's been tired. Yeah. Bro. Well, he's been fake retired for a minute. All right, hold on, hold on. And, I'm and, going and, with and, Joe. And if, if you're retired, I'm hearing you say all of that, but it's like playing hypotheticals like, yo, would Jordan be better than LeBron? Like, we don't no, know. But guess what? But Unless guess, no, no, you no, bought no. a step. I what? wanted Joe to drop a track. But bro. guess what? But Joe said the really shit on his podcast. He said, yo, that's cool, but you didn't say anything. He did not, and that's what... That's why I said about the album. It's a good album, but he's not rapping specifically about one or two things. There's only like two or three subjects on this whole album. Now, I think also, we didn't talk about track. this Venom record, right? Because I feel like Sony, Sony's playing a major part in this shit. Because Venom, the movie, is about to drop. and No, for real. And on, on Apple, it says, from the motion picture uh, on there. So that might be a big push as well. But anyway, go ahead. No, I do want to see Joe respond. Me too. I, you know it's not going to happen. No, no, no. It will. I was I a little will. bit disappointed, and I love Joe. Joe's my brother. Okay, uh, congratulations on all his success recently. On everything. But watching everything. Joe 
You know what I mean? To do the spin cycle. And I'm and that shit was is, entertaining though. Entertaining, but Joe is a capable rapper, bro. And I don't care about this this retired stuff. Again, we could play hypotheticals all day, but M is a nigga who's older than Joe, been in it more than Joe. He gave a, at least a line or whatever. I don't want to hear an explanation for like three lines. Mm. All I'm saying, I would rather a record from Joe. The podcast, his podcast is great, by the way. Yeah. Let me give that plug. Great. But, Joe, drop a fucking record, my nigga. Don't let MGK be the only nigga out here. Like, I don't want to hear the hypotheticals. Yo, I thought I was better than you for the last 10 years. Nigga, prove it. You're, st you're still a rapper, my nigga. But also they had a relationship, right? Keep in mind, it's still a little bit the different than him and MGK. I Joe, get it. Joe hit but look, the bell. look, if Drake also, and Meek are good shit. now, you never know. But maybe a record or make it harder <laughs> to go back. Joe yeah. ripped up all that relationship. No, he said some said, real shit. Nigga said, I got a better relationship with Drake than you. Yeah, but, but, but he said some real shit. And I feel like, I feel like it's, it happened. And I feel like an event. This uh, is what I'm saying. There's like no a record? time. Yeah, I don't feel like it's a time constraint on when he has to do it. He's focused, wait a second, he's focused on a lot of other things. No, no, 100%. So if he does it, 100%. and we all know that he's very calculated, if he does it, he's gonna do it a certain way. And like I said, if we have to go with M or Joe, I'm going with Joe. Okay. And I would go with Joe, but I can't go with a nigga who's not showing up. Oh, show okay. up. Show up with the bars, bro. It's media personality okay, now, man. Listen, right, media right, right, yo, he's a great media person. Yeah. Media personality aside, man, Joe got to get that nigga the same way he got Drake to fuck up on out of here with them three tracks. <laughs> nigga, get in one of those sweaty wife beater modes and go record <laughs> a track and get him the fuck up on out of here. Then get on your podcast and tear that nigga to shreds. It was entertaining. No twist. No twist. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was entertaining. Entertaining watching. He's always entertaining on his podcast. Right. But I, I want to hear a record. Listen, and I'm not going to... You Let's, drop your diss record first. Yes, because that could be big for, for Lil Wax career. I'm not going to excuse him not dropping a record because I feel like it's almost setting up a topic we're about to talk about. Nikki should be dropping a record. She about to do a whole fucking oh, show. Let's talk about it. Man. Like MGK All said. right, so now we're going to stop pretending like anything was ever cool between Nikki and Cardi, right? Right. Right. So we saw them talking. What was it? At the Met Gala. They looked really cute, having a nice little moment. Apparently, that was all a lie. So, of course, things escalated at a fashion week party at Harper's Bazaar Icons party. There's video all over the internet of Cardi lunging for Nikki and trying to toss a shoe at her. Let's take a look. <laughs> All right, so Nikki did not comment on this. She kept posting photos as usual, but Cardi did post this on Instagram, and we clearly know who she's talking about. So she said, quote, I've let a lot of shit slide. I let you sneak this me, let you lie on me, attempt to stop my bags, fuck up the way I eat. You've threatened other artists in the industry, told them if they work with me, you'll stop fucking with them. But essentially, you crossed the line once you're liking tweets about my child. Now, look... I don't think anybody's surprised here, but some of this sounds familiar. This is also what Remy was saying about Nikki at a certain point, right? Mm. So, who do you guys believe here? Listen, man, I accept Cardi how I met her, right? And what I mean by that is what she always told you in songs. She threw a shoe at you? No, no, no. <laughs> I was about to say. What are you talking it's about? It's a bitch shoe thrower. No. <laughs> what, what I accept from her is remember she had the song Ran Down on the Bitch Twice. Remember mm. she had that. Her opening line on Bodak Yellow is she say she going to do what to who? Let's find out and see, right? Right. Now, she been saying, I can't wait to have this baby because it's a bunch of bitches that I got problems with mm -hmm. that they going to see what's up. That whole MTV VMA shit, she was throwing little shots here and there, whatever, mm -hmm. right? Now, I commend her. I commend Cardi B. I commend her. I, you want to know why? Because when we talk about hip hop, and we talk about all these dudes who got problems with each other and talk all this shit about what they're going to do and see each other and then don't do nothing but tweet and make videos, right? Uh, uh, dissing each other. We never hold them accountable for saying what, doing what they say they're going to do or not doing what they say they're going right. to do. When it comes to Cardi, no, violence is not cool. But she's saying all. I pull up twice for the conversation. You I, acted like it was all good. Exactly. Now we're talking about this. Why I don't play with nobody kids, mm -hmm. right? I don't know what she tweet was liked or whatever, but guess what? Anything Nikki is doing, Cardi B has a mic, uh, 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 what's that, a magnifying glass on her phone looking like, 
oh, let me see if she liked this or she said this or something. Everything she does. Same with Nikki. I believe that they both watch each other more than we watch them, right? Now, it's crazy that it had to get uh, physical. At Fashion Week of all places. It's, it's crazy, and it's unfortunate that it had to get physical, but I, I'm tired of people also saying, oh, why would she do something like <laughs> this? This is going to stop. No, it's not going to stop nothing. You want to know why? Because that's who she always presented herself as. Right. And she was herself in this moment. We always know it's different. Once you get people's families involved, it's completely different. And a kid, a baby's innocent. So understandable that she would be this enraged. What do you think, Ak? Well, first of all, this whole Fashion Week shit, fashion shows are the new club. She looks so fabulous, <laughs> by the way. Fashion shows are the new club. <laughs> Niggas have polluted that whole scene. <laughs> it's all type of niggatry going on Nigger over there. <laughs> I got to tell y'all this, man. I wasn't surprised at this. Uh, you're right. It seems very true to Cardi's character, even though I feel like it is beneath her at this point, despite who she was. You have to know how to maintain yourself. And also, you know what? Even though you, I'm with you with all that. She was poor Logan and she was rich. No, no, okay, I'm with you with all that. <laughs> For real. Cardi with it. Except I always say, Cardi, you got 30 security. She got 30 security. What were you going to do? What were you going to do? Are you going to fight at, at Fashion Week? You got 30 security. She got 30 security. The venue got 15 security. Yeah. How are you going to get to Nikki? Nikki was stuck on a goddamn wall getting held by 10 security who were willing to take a shoe, a heel, a fucking, like, a, a little mascara thingy. Like, they would take anything for her like she was the president. So I look at that and I say... Even though I believe Cardi's very sincere in how she felt and how she was trying to approach Nikki, <clears throat> what was gonna happen? It, it, it looks like it looks like it looks like flexing at least. Oh, act, let, act wait. Do you hold think up, the message up. was more important than what really it, it ain't transpired? No, listen, it ain't no, about no, 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 wait, 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 wait. I, I'm not accusing her of flexing. Let me just clarify. Okay. I'm not accusing her of flexing, but it's gonna come across as flexing because you see. There's more no, security. It was hard to find out who's, where's Cardi at. I hear a voice. I'm, it's all security. I'm gonna tell you why. Because guess what, man? If you got a problem with somebody, it don't matter. I don't give a, like. This is just speak spoken from a person who has had problems, and people have problems with me at one point in time or another in my life. Don't nobody give a fuck who's around you. Everybody gets it. Whoever, it's on site. This is the whomever, first time they saw each other. with every security, they can't. You can't hold everybody back. People break through security. Now the thing is, like I said, she got a knot on her head. She do got a knot on her head because allegedly from a security guard's elbow by accident, right? I'm, sick I'm just saying security. Yo. Okay, but I'm the, just saying. Yeah. But like, you have to know where. I don't think. But again, when Bad Joe like, said at the award show, "Thank you, 55 and all that security." Yeah, ain't nothing gonna happen to 50 because he got yeah. all that. But to his point, if you're feeling away and you show up and you see that person for a first time, sometimes it's just on site. You can't control the you emotion, right? You can't control right? yourself. Like you, excuse me. You can't control yourself in that moment when you've been feeling away. They've been feeling away about each right. other. They they've been throwing subs back and forth and songs mm -hmm. and tweets and. Instagram captions, all that other silly shit. Now, I ain't gonna lie, yo. Like, this shit is entertaining as a motherfucker. I'm actually here for Queen Radio. I can't wait to hear Queen Radio because I want to know what she feels, right? Do we want to distract or do we want to hear her talk about it? Hold That's on, the next I want to hear What do we want? No, no. I want to hear distracts. Okay. As long as don't nobody get hurt. And this is my point, though. I don't think Cardi looked the best in all this because I know you're saying you can't control yourself. But how she don't look the best in all this, man. Maybe that's like, who she is. Maybe the ghetto black Twitter, but like it, 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 it's, it's the bro, no, you didn't do anything. Let's keep it. No, no, let's keep it real. You did not do anything. How? What did you do? She listen. She caused the commotion. No, no. I'm asking. She called that. So, so you caused the commotion. Now she made it very officially and publicly know that they do not fuck with each other. Okay, up that's until, great. Up no, until okay. this point, you're right. Everyone it was still always thought okay. Were maybe, exactly. Okay. No. Now we know. You're right. Now we know. And we've always known. Right. Only the Dick Ryan fans didn't know. So I'm saying didn't do anything because you got riled up. Nikki's there chilling, looking unbothered. She had a photo shoot after this, by the way. You're getting elbowed in the, in the face. You get escorted out of the, the, the event. Yeah. Nikki still stays there. So on social media, of course, like the, the niggas who just want to see a fight. Yo, you were ready to turn that's up. That's what makes up social media. What are you talking you're about? Right. You're right. right. You're What's right. your point? <laughs> that's what make. That's why we, we was just laughing this morning about some fuck shit. On, on Instagram, was we not? It, it, you're right. However, I feel like there's a way she could have handled it. That so did, you thought, he thought the Cardi way? B was going to walk in and say, is, you know yeah, what, yeah. Nikki? Come on, academics. I'm coming Let's to hear. you as a woman. I don't, you know, I don't Honestly, honestly I, don't think that's, I don't think that's the venue. If you really want to get that chick, 
No, if you really want to no, 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 get that chick, oh. you, you've talked to her. We've seen pictures of y'all from the last Met Gala, right? right. That's the thing. How smiling. often do you think they run into each other, first of all? Put it like this. You didn't get close to her. You just, what I'm saying is there's a way she to She was close. <laughs> she was close. It was as close no, as she was got close. to her. No, she was, they was close. Now, I love Cardi. I, yo, trust me. I love Cardi so much. Mm. But all I'm saying is that other than people trying to see a fight and yeah. trying to see like, oh, that fake flex and shit. And I, and I need to stop using that word because right. I don't believe she's fake flexing. Yes, remember all, the baby. Right? It's like a kid. I, I, I'm only, when I say fake flexing, I'm knowing what security is paid to do and no security guard or security company with five or ten security will let their client, even if you want to go fight, it could be, I don't know who elbow Cardi, it could have been her own scare, like, bitch, you ain't going to fight. You pay us. Yeah, all right. No okay, way. Okay, so, act, it's two, it's two sides to this, right? The, the now, now, now. Okay. Hold on. Go ahead. But this is the flip side. In the Instagram social media posturing, Nikki doesn't look good. You know why? Nikki has been talking all this shit about, like, she had a lot of energy for Miley. <laughs> Same thing. You're at the VMAs. Miley was good. You're not doing nothing to Miley. Cut it out. People so gotta stop. Flexing? Yes. <laughs> Yo, all these entertainers be flexing with security. They never meet up. They never scrap. Let's keep it hundred, bro. No, niggas right be talking it's, shit. It's, niggas talk shit, and when you see them, no, you absolutely. The right niggas with money, that. they have thirty security. So it's two sides to it, right? Now, yes. You know where you're right. Yeah, absolutely right. Where Cardi, you know, everybody can wait, turn wait, wait, for security. Wait, wait, wait. Look, okay, Cardi, <laughs> you a fucking superstar, mom. You know, new artists, we love everything from you. And do we want to see you in that light? No, right? No, like, the, is that something that we want to see? Do we want to see Cardi running down on people? Oh, no. But wait a second. Wait. Her but audience want to see exactly that. Exactly. Right, wait, her audience want to see that. This hurts I don't Cardi know. at all. No, I'm, this is what I'm getting to. All right, now, with Nikki, even with Nikki, I, do I want to see Cardi B and Nikki fight? <laughs> no, I don't. You're right? lying. No, I don't want to see them fight because I. I don't want to see nobody fight. <laughs> He's right? fucking lying. I don't want to see nobody <laughs> can't fight. Can't even give a but shit. Look, but look, but look, but look. What's the G-Show? What's the G-Show? Right? It's just, it's a moment. I feel like she got her point across because, yeah, we always felt like for the <clears throat> insiders, we know that, like, okay, they don't really fuck with each other, but she let it be known. She yep. let it be known right there. And the, the thing is this, right? I hate to see women specifically because I feel like that's the most highlighted thing when it comes to women, right? They always want to show women on some bullshit. They don't show when women are fucking donating their money because not only men donate money to causes, women women are donating money to causes, or women are doing so great things. Nikki, by the way, she, she paid for a lot of people too. Look, Absolutely, she paid for a lot. They don't, they don't highlight that as much as they highlight this. So no, I don't want to see that. But it was a funny moment. And I'm here for the funny <laughs> moments because we was, we was here for all the, the cocksuckers yeah. of the week. No, and no, all that other, no, all that other saying, shit. I'm not saying that. I, all, I'm just talking about an image. But I will say this. For Nicki Minaj, pop so much shit, that type of thing happened. She's announcing that Queen Radio. And, and by the way, like, I strongly believe Nicki at some point, and, uh, like, she's on this whole spin cycle trying to make herself the victim in all of this. Oh, Travis Scott did some. I'm the victim. Oh, Stormy was born on the video. Like, come on, man, cut it out. She has to explain, these, this is the fifth time, you, you just acknowledge it, fifth time like we've heard, or at least I'm counting five, fifth time we've acknowledged someone say, hey, you're doing shit behind the scenes to fuck with my money. Right. You're trying to block me from opportunities. You're telling people not to work with me. Mm. Where Keisha, Keisha Cole came up, came up to every day, she cried. That's what I'm saying, that's so what I think is the most Nikki important part Nikki has never answered here. that, and I know her fans are super loyal to exactly, her, but, but do who do we, if you who do play know? dirty behind the scenes mm. and you're trying to prevent young artists' careers, that's the only reason why I give, I, I give Cardi a pass. Because you know why, Cardi? People say shit about a lot of shit all the time, mm -hmm. and there's a time and a place for everything. You get that much, you can get it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But when you see someone, you know what I mean, when you add it all up, it's a cumulative effect. Mm -hmm. When you add it all up, this chick been trying to stop my back for forever, but still I prevail. Question. I sold more than her. Mm -hmm. This chick is now subbing my parental abilities. Mm -hmm. I might have to get it. That's, it. That's the only reason why I said, Cardi, I get it, even though I don't think it's the best, but I get it. But Aquino, Can does I this change the way you look or think about Nikki when we say she's a legend, no, right? No, she's no, a legend no. in the game. Yeah. If it is true that behind the scenes she's been actively trying to undermine other women, 
Does it change the way you feel about her? No, not for me because a lot of it's a lot of artists, man. That's why I say, man, a lot of these artists, you got to take them for their face value. Like I'm a, I'm a big. We had this conversation before. I'm a big Kobe Bryant fan, right? Like I would never want to meet him unless it was like some personal shit with somebody introduced me because if he treated me a certain way, I would be highly disappointed, right? right? It's the same shit with these artists. A lot of artists are not who you think they are off of these songs and out of these videos. They are, some of them are just bad people. Not specifically pointing that at Nicki, I'm just saying for a general statement. Yeah. Now, with Nicki, it doesn't make me look at her no different because I'm just taking what I get from her. Right. I'm not like, well, she hating on this or hating on that. But or I she think she said in an or... interview something to the effect of she was disappointed to the interviews Cardi did after uh, Motorsport. She was saying if I did basically did a song and there was a legend on it, I would feel honored. She felt like Cardi's response to it was rude to begin with. Hey, self-preservation. I know we're pointing Nikki out, and it's really because we know the the amount of females that have gotten relative success. It, it, the, the list is rather short, so we're looking at Nikki to say, if you contributed to holding other people out, it's kind of egregious. But let's not act like niggas don't do it too. We had an artist that came right. on Everyday Struggle who told me afterwards, "Hey, a nigga made sure I wasn't on a show. Mm. He told the promoter if if that nigga on the show." I ain't doing a show and I'm the bigger artist. This music industry is about leverage. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it makes you a bad person or just self-preservation. If you feel someone doesn't like you mm -hmm. or is trying to get you out and you are either, people do that at war shows. So if so-and-so win, it, yes. Yeah. If so-and-so win, I'm not, I'm not coming. coming. Right. I'm not giving you ratings to, for you to highlight that guy. I'm not coming to see your audience that you could show that this is the new person that's taking my spots, winning over me. You know it. You know that's true. That's some, that shit is whack. I'm gonna keep it hundred. Like I'm never not going to a place on a personal that, level. It's yeah. whack. Well, you know what happens. Like, this is a music business. Okay. Again, I have no proof <laughs> of this, but yeah. I, I wouldn't be shocked if Drake didn't do the same thing to Meek at times. Mm -hmm. Yo, if this nigga come to this or whatever, I don't want him there. And and we might cite oh so, like we got problems, but. No, I don't want to give nobody no opportunity that has issues with me. Nikki has been on some like, oh, Atlantic is brewing another chick to come come against me. Right. Oh, they keep signing other people and trying to position them. I need to protect my spot. Okay, cool. And again, I'm not agreeing with it. I do think it's flagrantly wrong, especially, and I'm sorry to point out, but in, in female rap, because we don't have that many women rappers who are really rising to the top. So when you're just hugging the spot and, doesn't look like you're embracing other female rappers. You're just only boxing everybody out. It's really egregious, but let's not act like it's not self-preservation. Do I think Nikki's a bad person? No. I think she's a chick who realized that she got the queen status after, of course, Lil' Kim, and she's like, shit, I see all these chicks that, you know, people are so quick to, look how people are championing Cardi B. People are so quick to champion the new chick. <clears throat> But is, it, but, is like, just that she's, that. but is it just the new chick or are some people, some people tired of Nikki's actions or just tired of her as a whole? Because that's the true, thing. True that too. Every, every time we're always going to get the next generational superstar. Mm -hmm. That's just forever going to happen. I feel like if you're not secure in your spot and you're not willing to understand that you're not always going to jump as high as you used to, yeah. then you'll never be able to be respected how you should. Right now, I guess... My mouth all good. I'm just wondering if self-preservation, making sure you're good, your career is safe, is the same thing as blocking someone That's else. That's two different things, I don't things, think right. that those are the same. Like, That's I don't want to be same. successful at the expense of other people. I believe in Nikki's mind it is. I, I, I okay. wholeheartedly believe in Nikki's mind it is. Because I, I don't want to believe that she's a very bad person who just hates people and who just... That's, I don't, that I don't, I don't, malicious. I don't think that she's a bad person. I just think that... You know, you have to realize, yo, and like I, that's why I equate a lot of things to sports. You have to realize that you're not always going to be as good as you once was. Th that's why we get an Eminem album with him going yeah. that hard in that degree, right? You're not, th that's like tomorrow if we get a Jay-Z album and he's rapping all about selling drugs again, yeah. right? It's like he doesn't have to prove that point to us. So I think that when you're in a certain space, if you can't understand adapting, I think the biggest problem with Nicki is adapting how new shit is, right? And adapting how, yeah, when she was selling a lot of these records, it was a physical aspect where people came to in stores to purchase an album to have that FaceTime. And now it's just people clicking and pressing buttons. And I think that because she took so much of her time off that that kind of deteriorated how she 
moves in the game. Like it's, I don't think that she's dumb by no means. She's a very smart businesswoman, but I think that maybe something she's just not accepting how they are now, yeah. right? And there's always gonna be the next guy, yo. As much as we champion and Drake, it's gonna be somebody that that younger generations is gonna be like Drake, that old nigga. Mm -hmm. This new motherfucker is the shit. Who cares about him? The same way they do Jay Z. It's a circle of life. Yeah, right. So you have to be able to adapt. With that, you've never seen Jay Z falter. You think right. people never was like, "Yo, what's J Cole is gonna be better than him, or yeah. Kendrick is better than him, or Drake is better than him?" He didn't start wilding like start doing all types of crazy actions because it's like, "All right, let me usher them in." Yeah, when and, you're one of the greatest of all time, no, you're not always gonna be hot, that, but you have to move well. Right. Nikki's in the. You, you know, like they say. In entertainment, people love you, hate you, they love you again. Yeah. Nikki's in the hate period. I'm not gonna lie, and we gonna keep it on hundred. Like, trust me, you hear something happen, Cardi and Nikki, you're inclined to take Cardi's side. You know what? A lot of maybe you could call it karma or whatever, but like, Nikki's at the point where like you're not that scorching hot, so everything you've done fucked up is coming to get you. She has to live through that period. She has to realize what is working for Cardi, that humbleness, that. I'm not above you type of effect. I don't know if she is getting that. I think she has to do. The only way, and I'll, pu I'll put this on record. Okay. The only way for Nikki, if she ever gets back in the hearts of the majority, not her fans, her stand base is incredible. But for the the uh, majority of hip hop to be like, oh, Nikki, that's our chick like, like we once did. She has to humble herself and almost present herself like a servant of music. Like, I don't, I don't. She, she can't be with this little bravado, the queen, bitches in my sons, yo, I did this, but guess fuck y'all. I, I don't like that humble word. Like, Got to. No, I don't, and I, I'm gonna tell you I why. believe Meek humbled himself somewhat. No, even, well, even though well, maybe to not... an extent, wait, to an extent. Okay. The, the reason why I don't like the word humble is because like, the word humble, I think you should be more grateful than humble. I feel like humbleness, in a sense, can hold you back, mm. right? Because you feel like, now, you shouldn't be an asshole, right? Now, you shouldn't be an asshole. We know right and wrong, and we know being an asshole and being a good person. Right. But I don't think Nikki has to look at anything Cardi's doing. Because, honestly, if, we, if we're talking about careers, Nikki has lasted way uh, for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think that what Nikki has to emphasize on is what's worked for her and just build from that. All of the crazy actions heard, you know, every week is she's saying something about a person, this, that, and a third. Cool, but eventually it's gonna die. Mm -hmm. I think that she she doesn't have to humble herself, yo. Because uh, th that that's the that's the biggest problem I think she's having that people are telling her, yo, be humble. And she mm -hmm. and within her, she's like, damn, I've done so much, and y'all want me to fucking be yeah. quiet. I understand. Also, you guys you are kind of. Word out? I'm gonna switch that word yeah, out. Yeah, I'm saying you guys are yeah. agreeing. It's just the, the words are different. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You're I'll, saying I'll the same thing. Okay. I'll switch that word out. Instead of being humble, is and most artists get to this point in their career, mm -hmm. entitledness. Mm. There you go. You're entitled to nothing. Don't be right. entitled. Right. You're, like, right, you right, did right. 10 years, but they'll shit on you in a second. Absolutely. You got to stop being entitled. Absolutely. I heard her sit up on the interview with salute to Elliot Wilson. Uh, I, I think that was a Crown interview on Title. And she said, man, I've been in here 10 years. How dare y'all compare me? You're not entitled to anything. At some point, they are going to compare you to the person on their first year. You have to stop acting like you're entitled to things. Right? And once you stop that, people will see that you're, you're still working for it. You delivered a great album. Ain't nobody over here trashing your album. Mm. People are trashing how you felt you were entitled to number one. Mm. That entitlement is the issue for people like me. You get me? So, right. so hopefully she changes that. All right, cool. Good job, Axe. And, 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 <laughs> he found the word that we could all agree and, and, and on. And hold on. And by the way, since Queen Radio is coming on today, yes, I can't, I can't wait. wait. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> but Queen Radio coming on today, I'm going to tell you how Nikki should handle this. And... I, I have to absolve Karen Civil from any of this because I can't believe she's listening to Karen Civil. She's made too many missteps over the last couple of weeks. Nikki, don't go on Queen Radio explaining like, oh, this, don't do it. Drop a song. Mm. Do the thing that that chick can do like you. Mm. Rap mm. and call her out for to rap back. Mm. She can't rap back with you. You will bar her underneath the fucking bridge. Do that. Do not explain yourself. Cardi has offset. Wait, are you co signed the strategy? <laughs> Car Cardi was <laughs> on Instagram having her own queen radio, except there's a knot on her for it, so she wrote a note. Trust me, the knot probably went down. She'll probably get on after you. Don't do much talking. Drop a record. It okay. doesn't have to be fuck you, Cardi, but explain your side through raps. That's the only advantage you have. You've been touting that, yo, 
Yo, I don't think people give enough credit to people who write. Okay, this is your time. Yeah. This is your time. Listen. This chick, she she was she's a fighter or whatever she is. I don't know. She ran up, Ooh. didn't really whip your ass. Nigga, without a record. <laughs> Let's see. All right, y'all. <laughs> Tune into Queen Radio. We'll be back here tomorrow. Um, Kanye and Drake. I ain't gonna lie, I got 20 that she ain't dropping a record. Yeah. <laughs> Kanye and Drake. Oh, man. All right, so last week, Kanye did an interview with 107.5 in Chicago, which is actually pretty funny. So he talked about the issues with Drake. He said, look, when we talk about the Drake thing, it hits me in a really sensitive place. You hang out around people that come to your house, your family, and then they get mad about a beat and send you purple demon <laughs> emojis. Um, then he got on Twitter later and apologized in a series of tweets um, to Drake basically saying, these are moving really fast. I'm sending good energy and love to Drake and the crew. I haven't been able to see the show in person, but it looks incredible. Uh, he said, since we're building as friends and brothers, I should have spoken to Push about the Quinton Miller bar. There should have been no songs with my involvement that had any negative energy towards you. He's also saying he did not have any conversations with Pusha about Drake's son. He never listened to either of the diss tracks. It took him a long time. Why do you guys think he's clearing this up right now? Uh, After the purple demon emojis. Oh, uh, the, the nigga please award of the year goes to Kanye. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Yo, listen, man. I'm, I'm going to keep it 100. Me and my man was talking about this over the weekend. And we talk, He told me, he said, uh, I've been logged out from the Kanye West, uh, off the Kanye West channel. Yeah, I'm going Kanye Like, honestly, man, like, <clears throat> I, I'm just so tired. Of it. Every time he... The grass, he got him shook? Huh? The boy from the grass, It ain't even shook? about the Act boy has from a real the, wild theory about this, though. I, it ain't even the whole thing about the whole, like, who Drake is and all that. First <laughs> of all, he didn't at Drake in none of these tweets. <laughs> He's sending all this love with no ads. I'm not jagging it. We but know anyway. Drake is sick of all this lovey-dovey shit. Yeah, right? but I'm I'm just tired of like like come on, <laughs> dog. Like make up your mind, my nigga. Like now it's it's oh I'm sending nothing but positive energy and all of that. You can't send positive energy to a person who don't got no nothing good to say about you at the moment. Right. Like you like we talked about early in the show. Mm -hmm. Let the time heal that shit. Cool the fuck out, Kanye. Make some music. Now, you know what I mean? Make some music. All of this. He sent me purple demon emo. What does that even mean? Um, I'm ask you. He'd be on Twitter. If a nigga sends you purple. What does that if mean? If you argue with him and he sends you purple demon emojis in your DMs, fuck that mean. You get extra What would you or? interpret that to me? I would laugh. Like, first of all, <laughs> I'm not with the emo. Like, listen. <laughs> I'm not with the emojis. Listen, no, this, this is my thing, right? Over, like, three, over three emojis, there's something going on there. Bro. <laughs> over three emo <laughs> it, it's just crazy to me that, like, a cartoon purple face can affect someone's heart. Like, yo, he sent me purple demon emoji, so you know what? I feel like I need to change. I'm sorry, Drake. Push it. Get the fuck out of here, my nigga. Listen, oh, cut all that shit out. Stop talking about this, nigga. If y'all not cool, just let y'all not be cool. The world still turns. You still can feed your kids. Like, he just really want to be cool with Drake. That's all I see from it. I don't see that at all. I see a nigga that shook. And while some of this might seem like a th or Actually, it isn't. It's pretty wild theory, act. No, no, let me tell you this. OK, a lot of the shit that Drake was saying, I, I, I heard a couple of rumors. I heard that there were certain songs that was recorded by Drake in the aftermath on Scorpion, mm -hmm. in the aftermath of him hearing what Pusha had to say on the story of Add It On. Okay. They went in to record some mm -hmm. new songs. And if you don't listen to those particular songs, I could tell you a couple of songs that I heard was recorded afterwards. Mob Ties, 8 out of 10. Mm. Um, What's the can't something? I can't remember the name. Can't tell him no or can't whatever it is. But listen to the content I'm of those years. songs. He He's know, supposed he to know all the no, names. No, no. I forgot the name of the song, but I know <laughs> the content. With you, with you. Anyway, if you go listen to those songs and you hear what's being talked about, I, I know Drake seems like a very like it's Drake. No one listened right? to Mob Ties and thought that Drake was serious. Are you saying? That he was. I didn't think nothing about Kanye when I heard that song. I just like that's a general statement. But you're saying that it's not eight a general statement. Listen, listen to eight out of ten. I listen to eight out of eight ten. Eight out of ten. The whole thing's about Kanye West. The whole thing. But it's not a. That's not a song where you listen to like, oh my no, god. No, no, you wouldn't. That's is... what I'm saying. No, you. So you wouldn't. All I'm saying is that I believe this. Your wife is listening. Yeah, like all of that. Beyond Who that. doesn't listen no, to Drake? No, beyond that, he's talking about. White cars be like, it felt like nigga was told about some outside stuff outside. I know you, the look on your face says, Drake. I get it. This is what get the it. average fan it. probably. I get it. Right. 100% right. I get it. But I'm going to just couple this theory with saying those songs were not random and he's just not making up this whole thing. When Kanye West is getting on Instagram and also calling Jay Prince to say, <laughs> hey, 
I'm not with this shit. When he, if you listen to I'm the interview, an hour and thirty minutes, he consistently says, "I know we're, we're, it's really funny to make like, yo, the purple emoji got you show." But what he kept saying, I'm "Not a gangster. I'm not into that type of shit. I don't do things like that." People so is said, he insinuating? Wait, this I don't know I'm, what he's insinuating. Like, hold hold, on, saying, hold I, on, you can make your own, own assumptions. All I'm saying is, I believe it's all tied. It's all tied. I don't. I I definitely believe that Kanye it, is, feels physically threatened by Drake. Is what we're saying. I just want to make sure, because this sounds crazy. He has the best security be, could, on the planet. That's what I'm saying. Kanye is so, he's dating, he's married to a Kardashian. Don't okay, okay, have... okay. I'll put it like this. Yeah, I feel yeah. like Kanye West felt that this issue with him and Drake was going somewhere beyond music that he wasn't comfortable. <laughs> wait, wait. No? He said wait. it. I'm just saying, man. I, I, it sounds look, funny to me. I, 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 I'm telling you it's listen, not funny to me. All right, look, look, look. Why would he be calling Jay Prince? Tell me. Why would you call and why would you be calling? Because he's a scary nigga. Fuck you mean. This oh. nigga's a scary nigga. Oh. We talking about Kanye okay. West. Okay, okay, okay. Kanye West ever, ever posed a threat to anything other than a fly to you in all, your all right, life? All right, all right. So all, I'm speaking from his perspective. I don't know What's what it really was. I, I, think I just it, feel like this. Okay. It could have been, been UPS outside and nigga thought it was Drake's <laughs> Who knows? I'm just saying. Right. He, <laughs> felt, he felt Kanye like, like stuff like, was like, happening. It was, snowing, it was snowing and Kanye seeing a fucking Mr. Softy truck outside his crib. He <laughs> see the ice cream truck. <laughs> it was like, oh shit. Drake is not fucking. They doing the Kyle Masses. This is how I feel. But all right, look, Drake and Kanye are never gonna have a lyrical spat, right? They're never because because Drake. I mean, Kanye is not with it at all. Because Drake is gonna have to write Kanye's raps. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But but even with like with Drake, I just think like Drake is like yeah, nigga, like I'm on your at like. Fucking with him, but I don't think that he was like, yeah, Kanye, these purple demon emojis, I'm gonna send some black roses to your house next. Like, I'm gonna hurt you. Like, no, no, hold on. Yo, th- no, this nigga's out of, no, Kanye is out of touch, my nigga. He's out of his mind. Like, yeah, I really wait, feel like wait, he's wait, out of I'm his mind. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like, for real. I heard from multiple sources. <laughs> what? It was that. It was what? I heard it was beyond music. Okay. I heard it was beyond. And, and by the way, all right, let's go back to beyond the, music on what level? Okay. Like, Drake was gonna get him touched? No, no, no. I don't want to insinuate nothing like that at all. Whoa, whoa, let's, let's slow down. What? I, I just want to stick to, I'm a rapper, mm-hmm. you're a rapper. Right. You, I feel you We're did, both liars. Okay, cool. You, right. you, you did something kind of wild, right. and I thought we were cool. We live close to each other. We used to be right. comparing pools. Now you did some wild shit. Right. Yeah, maybe, like, I, I don't think we, we're going to be rapping about this issue. That's no. all I'm saying. Okay. It, nigga, it could have been a fist fight. N- never know. It, okay, who knows, right? All I'm saying, it wasn't the point that, yo, the first instinct is to rap. This was also proven to me when I, I told you about the conversation I had with Drake. Drake said it b- was bringing me to a dark place. Wow. It yeah, brought me. He said, I didn't release the song right. because after that incident, it brought me to a dark place. It doesn't insinuate that he's going to do nothing or whatever. All I'm saying is if I'm putting together all these clues, Kanye... <laughs> As well as acknowledging, I don't like the place it was going. Okay. I don't know if he's he was sensing something. Mm-hmm. Maybe the no. purple demon emotion. I think we're honey. just confused because it's just Kanye and the Kardashians. You would think they have Wait, the best security say, in I the do world. Have, you know what I would have? You know what I would have did if I was Drake? I would have fucking sent this nigga an owl. I would have had a handler come to his crib and deliver him a whole owl. I'm dead serious. I can't that would have been super lit. If, Dr- if we'd have been like, yo, we'd have seen like Wait, with TMZ. a note like in Harry Potter? Nah, or just shit, no, no, no note, no nothing. If we'd have seen like, like kind, TMZ in front of Kanye's crib and like a person is taking an owl out of the house, you'd be like, yo, Drake sent him an owl? That would have been way more lit than oh, Purple man. Demon emoji. <laughs> No, Fuck all of this no, shit, man. I, I, I For think real. he's mentioning Purple Demon emojis. Yeah. I don't think he's mentioned other stuff. I, I don't do, even I, know I what do, that I means. do have another theory, though. I think this is very well calculated on Kanye's part. Even though we wouldn't be like, oh, he's he just like it's shook up everything. It's not an album rollout. No, no. I think he. I think his new Yeezy, it's like three pair of Yeezys coming out. No. No, wait. Well, well, we could get to Drake this and the Yeezy, but <clears> think about Kanye, right? Who then, we don't really know the reason why Drake's dissing him. Supposedly it's in a diss track, we don't even know what it is, yeah. right? Killing a nigga with kindness to say, whatever I did, man, I'm so sorry. I'm apologizing publicly. It makes Drake look like a bully now. If Drake, no, what? Uh, uh, we, and Drake don't give a fuck. Bro, that's what I like. I don't, no, no, no. But we don't, don't know what fuck. Kanye did. Like, he, he's den- he <clears throat> denies, I didn't tell Pusha about it, whatever. I'm sorry. Well, Pusha it, said it too. Pusha said, yo, I didn't tell. He said, he said, man, I wasn't telling him I was doing nothing. Yeah. He I said, you got my family involved. Yeah, I don't need like, anyone's permission. Nothing. Kanye apologized for eight different things. I'm sorry I dropped your release date. I'm sorry I didn't put you on the beat. I'm sorry you think I, I told Push I didn't do it. We don't even know what it is. So I think the apology publicly, 
Nigga, you got that nigga number. You live next door. Get Kim to bring some cookies in and apologize. But you know what he did? He did it on social media. You know what that means? Stop dissing that nigga at your shows because you look like a bully, Drake. We don't know why you're mad. What? Go like this no push him. Drake, on some real though. No, he don't, you really he don't. think Drake looks like a bully? He don't yes! look like no, Drake no, he does like a bully. not look like no bully. And uh, on top of that... You keep dissing a nigga who's publicly saying, I want no smoke. Fuck you're that a bully. nigga. So what? So what? Fuck him. But you, we, don't, we don't have any reason. He just dissing you know, so just what? Yes, he does have reason. I don't like you no more. There was enough reason that he's waiting for Kanye and Pusha was dissing him album be produced. Yo, do you need... There was enough reason. Do you need a reason to not fuck... No, you don't, man. You know what it is? If you're gonna be on some public shit like that and be included everything, you're changing lines... Yeah, with Kanye fucked and all that. Yeah, yeah Don't wear no 350s around me. So what? So what? So what? Fuck that, man. If Drake... I feel like this, yo. If Drake wanted... That's why I said, yo, if we not cool... We don't have to be cool, okay? He just got cool with Meek. He don't gotta call Kanye tomorrow like, you know what? I just deaded this shit with Meek. This shit with us ain't that serious. No, if you feel like fuck that nigga, fuck him. What's the problem? So wait, no, this you, world, listen, this world You don't exists. wanna know a reason? Bro, listen, the world exists on balance. Balance is up and down, hot and cold, left and right, niggas fucking <clears> with <throat> each other and not. Leave it at that. Wayno don't fuck with a lot of people. I, I don't. <laughs> Straight That's up. Well, Wayno look like you probably went to Made America like, y'all don't fuck with half of these niggas here. <laughs> no, I, no, that's not the case, but it's a lot of people I don't fuck with. But at the same time, it's like, I don't pretend. I don't pretend. I'm not going to sit here and smile and be like, yeah, you know, I don't. No, and I'm not going to be like, we don't have to have an altercation. If I don't like you, I don't like you. If, you, if, you're, if I'm Drake and I don't like Kanye, I'm gonna say I don't like you. I want you to know that I don't like you. And all of that, yeah, I wanna be your friend. No, I don't wanna be your friend, fam. Your man diss my fam, my kid. Fuck you. Okay. What's the problem? All right, hold on, hold on. And before, because we've been on this topic a little while. Right. Last thing, right? Because he also apologized. He said, I apologize. And I, I mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. That's why Drake, one of the reasons Drake got mad and did um, Duffy Freestyle. You produce the beat, you produce Infrared, and you got your man on there this to me. Right. In hindsight, do you believe that's a misstep? I don't I don't believe <laughs> that. I like yeah, I I don't believe that. But even at the same time, I I think that Kanye is just so oblivious to how the world works human and operates. Yeah. Like human <laughs> like breathing and no, seriously. I I really feel like he's been in a bubble creatively or whatever he wants to say so much that he probably heard it and did not know. Like, he might have heard that shit and just bypassed it. Because he definitely heard it. He produced the beat. Mm -hmm. But he might have just bypassed it. And by the time it's out, it's out. And he might have heard it and just thought it was not that serious. Or it didn't put it together the way Act put shit together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Either way, I think people can see why Drake could feel a way. Your theory is very interesting. Hey, hey, um, I hope I, there are I, more, I, more I purple I, demon I, emojis traded. I think I know I'm a little bit more than a regular no person. <laughs> and... Shit, I don't know why Drake keep this and that nigga like that. This pusher. Because <laughs> it was about Kanye from the start, dog. It yeah. was never was on no... That's why we said that ever since we could go back and backtrack it. We said Duppy Freestyle was way more about Ye than it was for Pusher. He had like a few lines in there for Pusher, but it was more for Kanye. You want to know why? Because he was, he was. I wouldn't say they close because I don't know their relationship, but he had more of a relationship. They've had at least ten years of some sort of relationship. Of some, he, he up and down his first them. video, yeah. right? He directed yeah. best I ever had. Yeah. Yo, guess what, man? He could feel Drake could feel however he wants. I want to know what what Ye did, man. Because I don't I, even know why I, you need more information here to understand why he feels the way. They're beefing publicly. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Okay. Like, I don't want to hear the niggas dissing each other for no reason, especially when you had that long of a friendship. Well, apparently it's no longer a beef. Kanye feels really sorry for everything he did. There He's you sorry. have it. He's sorry, bro. Sorry. Drake, though, is upset still. Drake's for watching all beef, that man. I can say. You know that Jamaican song. <laughs> you know that Jamaican okay, song. Man. Right. All right. Oh. So uh, I think we got time for one more. We're going to be a little bit long today. All right. So you guys remember we had Nick Cannon on like a week and a half ago. We did that little recap. So Nick and academics had another wild theory that maybe just say it yourself, please. And then I'll. I said, man, hey, the, the whole the cat in the bag type of shit is shit. Drake smashed Kim K. Okay, so he wants a reason why, but that's your theory. So look, um, <laughs> right. Kim Kardashian was not feeling this theory at all. Shade Room reposted our social clip. She hopped in the comments, said, never happened. End of story, Again, period. <laughs> so now that she's responded to this, can we put your theory to rest? Is it all cap or no cap? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we're not putting it to rest. By the way, and Nick is someone who knows her a little well. Anyway, uh, until we find out, that's a working theory. I'm sorry, Kim K. What Kim do you mean K find out? Until so that song is dropped Drake, and Drake, Drake and says Kanye what it respond? is. Okay. 
I'm sorry. Hey, Kim, listen, is Kim K, because she went to the White House a couple of times, she's not a beacon of truth and, and light? No. Kim K, we fuck with you, but you a Kardashian. Keep it true. I got to keep it 100 with you. I believe you as much as I believe Kylie didn't get lip injections. That's it. Wow. <laughs> fuck. Yo, man, you got to stop coming on football fields with hockey pucks and shit. Listen, so, yeah, it, it makes <laughs> no sense. Exactly. It, it, yeah, they're not nothing of the same. He just came with no ways. <laughs> but I don't Eddie, believe her, bro. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm her. talking no, about was... you believe her as much as you don't believe that we all Kylie did, did sell a, a lot of uh, lip kits off of the lip injections to his point. She made billions off of it, right? Right. All right. So, uh, I, what I said when that was <laughs> let's said. Let's stay on topic. <laughs> let's stay on topic. But what I meant by that is, see, for me, I don't play with people's <clears throat> wives. I don't right. play with people's um, kids and none of that. And I don't want to make no insinuations because you start having on-site situations mm. when you start saying things of that nature, right? Now, Kanye might send you some purple demon emojis. Or Kim might throw a shoe at you. Thing. Better be right. careful. She might run down on you and Kanye might send your ass some purple demon emojis, whatever those mean. I'm more but, scared of Vic Mensa mascara than I said. <laughs> You can't stop playing with Vic Man. Mensa. Now, Vic Mensa, he's doing his thing. <laughs> Every time you get hyped, you <laughs> Yeah, stop Little playing twist. with Vic, man. All right, man. I think that's our show for that's today, right? It. Should we just save the rest for tomorrow? That was a lot. Yeah, you guys good? Lot. Hey. I we missed so, you, people. We missed yeah, y'all, too. I have so much more thoughts on Cardi and Nikki, but we're, like, running past time. And we're going to get a part two tomorrow because Queen Radio. Queen Radio. Oh, Queen Radio is lit. Wait, I'm no, make sure you listen. Fuck, if not, I'll record it for you. I got you. No, I'm listening. I will be tuned in to Queen Radio I'm as I'm playing 2K. Did you get 2K? Yeah, I'm streaming. Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's lit. Aki, you gonna, Aki's going to set me up on Twitch eventually so I can start getting my Twitch shit popping. You got Xbox over here? Nah, I got PS4. All right, guys, we got to go. Ladies and gentlemen, Everyday Struggle, we're back. We're here till Christmas. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. So says the desk. I Shut didn't up. get the memo to wear all black. If she doesn't <laughs> climb a tree between them, <laughs> Jesus Christ.